Today we're talking slashers, so down in the comments, I want to hear your favorite slasher movie that doesn't have a sequel. And just so I can steal some of your thunder, I'm going to say that my favorite is Jeff Lieberman's Just Before Dawn. I'm Adam Caesar. This is Project Black T-Shirt, the channel where we take a new release or a reissue or several movies, uh, usually horror movies, and then pair them with a reading recommendation that you will enjoy if you like those movies. I am the author of Clown in a Cornfield, the teen slasher sensation sweeping the nation. As I record this, this book has been nominated for the Bram Stoker Award. Uh, I don't know. I'm probably going to put this up uh, in a week or two. So I might have lost and it might have won the Bram Stoker Award. We don't really know right now. Uh, but thank you so much to everyone who has uh, checked out the book, who has checked out uh, any of my books, really. I have a number of novels and novellas, and they're all available in audiobook, uh, in hardcover, in paperback. So thank you so much. As you can probably tell from the title, today we are talking slasher movies. We are talking what I consider to be underrated slasher movies. Uh, this is by no means any kind of definitive countdown list. These are five slasher movies that I've watched somewhat recently uh, over the last uh, six months or so because I've, I've been uh, working on a project that is slasher related. The one rule I kind of had was, are they on Blu-ray? Are the Blu-rays currently in print? Like, I don't want you having to go on eBay and try to find these things for a million dollars. So that was the one it was the one thing when I was making this list, when I was making this video. I wanted to talk about movies that are you're currently available. You can actually get them. If you want to check out any of the movies I talk about, uh, I will put links down in the description to where you can buy these discs, either from Amazon or from our friends at Diabolic DVD or direct from the distributor in the case of something like Vinegar Syndrome. So no further ado, let's, let's, let's pick up some slasher movies and let's talk about them. The first movie I want to talk about is probably the most well-known movie on this list. This is The Slumber Party Massacre. Uh, this was a, a series of films. There, uh, there are two more sequels, and there's, there's, I think, just recently announced there's going to be a remake. I wanted to talk about this movie because I think usually when you see stuff about Slumber Party Massacre or the Slumber Party Massacre series, uh, people tend to talk about Slumber Party Massacre 2. So you see the guy with, like, the guitar drill and stuff like that, and it's kind of... Slumber Party Massacre 2 is, is more overtly a comedy or more overtly a parody. Uh, I want to talk about the original because I think the original is way better. I think it's easily the best of the films in the series, and I think it's a much more interesting movie than it kind of gets credit for. This was released in 1982 when the when the slasher boom was really revving up. Uh, this is a Roger Corman produced film, and this is uh, directed by Amy Holden Jones. This is a uh, female director uh, bringing a kind of female perspective to the slasher, in many ways engaging with kind of the the criticisms that are usually leveled at slashers and talking about um, what some people see as the inherent misogyny of the slasher of the final girl tropes and things like that uh, but i just i love slumber party massacre it is funny without being an outright comedy it is uh satirical without being an outright satire um it it's it's when i like these films films like this the most is when they can critique a thing but still be the thing if, if that makes sense Slumber Party Massacre works as both a slasher and as a critique of the slasher. That's why I think it's so great. Uh, and that's why I think uh, the, the next two films in the series fall down a little bit, uh, in my estimation. But this is a fantastic movie. Uh, I'm talking about this specific version of it, because this is the Shout Factory, Scream Factory recent steelbook. You can see I, I keep, my, uh, keep my stickers on the steelbooks. Um... I've gotten pretty much all of the Corman reissues they've uh, they've done of these. If you have the old Blu-ray, there's there's nothing new here. There's no there's no there's no new material, no new extra features, other than the fact that this is a new 4K scan of the film. And as I talked about, I think I talked about Piranha many many videos ago, but I talked about the Piranha reissue. These are kind of worth the upgrade for the uh, scans alone. I'm not a huge steelbook collector. I'm not a huge like. Like, I'm not, not buying into that gimmick, but I'll, I'll buy into the, the movies look a lot better uh, gimmick because it is, movie looks great. Uh, movie looks really clean. It is kind of exactly what you think it is looking at the cover. It is girls having a slumber party and a escaped killer with a power drill comes and crashes their party and kills them and kills their boyfriends and everything. Uh, this movie's just really clever, really really smart. And I think the, the last 15 minutes is just so, such a perfect kind of final showdown between this group of women and the uh, the killer, Russ Thorne. 
It's a movie I like so much, I even got the uh, the special edition that comes with the Russ Thorn action figure, which is just, I have, I literally own like, like two action figures, and one of them is Russ Thorn, because just really cool. The next movie we're going to talk about is a, a movie I had, I know, I knew very, very little about. Uh, this is Savage Weekend. This is 1979, so kind of early in the slasher cycle, since it is still during the 70s. Uh, but this is a... Um, a fantastic movie, filmed in upstate New York uh, with a really good cast. Um, David Gale from Reanimator uh, plays kind of this um, this imposing local guy who's got this like crazy mustache. He looks almost unrecognizable. And William Sanderson plays this um, plays this like real uh, troubled hillbilly uh, that you're 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 made to believe has to be the killer, but to such a degree that you're like he can't be the killer. Um, it's a mass slasher. It's a is a mystery slasher. Uh, slasher with a mystery element. Uh, S Savage Weekend's interesting because it is, um, it's not a teen slasher. Uh, the characters are not teenagers. They're like, they are like professional adults, uh, from New York who are like, have wives and divorces and, uh, all, and, and all this, all this baggage that adults have. Uh, and then you see them kind of killed off, uh, one by one by this, uh, by this guy that wears this, uh, creepy monster mask. And it's, it's, it's really, really, really good. Uh, this is kind of a really uh, kind of best kept secret kind of movie. It's 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 filled with violence and sex and nudity and all the things that you uh, probably enjoy if you enjoy the slasher genre. Uh, but just done, like I said, a little bit more uh, a little bit more upmarket, a little bit more uh, adult in that it gets away from the, the the kind of concerns of teens and enters the concerns of adulthood. Uh, really, really good picture. This is written and directed by a guy named David Paulson. Uh, and this, uh, the, the Kino Larber, uh, disc of this is, uh, is fantastic. I, I, I really recommend getting this disc. Next, uh, to throw a real curveball on things, because sometimes when people watch this channel, they will comment down in the comments saying, you only watch movies from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. You only talk about movies from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. You only seem to like movies from the 60s, 70s, and 80s, which isn't really true. I talk about recent releases all the time, but I don't really talk about catalog titles much beyond that. Uh, much beyond the, the 60s, 70s, 80s, sometimes 90s. Uh, but this, Cherry Falls, uh, 2000, the year 2000. Hey, this is an inclusion on this list with a slight asterisk because I, I think Cherry Falls, uh, year 2000, uh, starring Brittany Murphy and Michael Bean and, and Jay Moore as the teacher. Uh, this is a, uh, a slasher kind of in the scream mold where there is like kind of a almost meta gimmick because the killer in this small town of Cherry Falls is only killing virgins. Uh, this is a, a teen slasher through and through, an early 2000s teen slasher, uh, kind of in the wake of the Scream, I know you did last summer, uh, Urban Legends. That, that, that slasher cycle, that slasher boom, this is kind of coming towards the tail end of it. And this is a movie that was um, supposedly incredibly cut down by the distributor, incredibly cut down by the studio, after uh, after they saw a cut of it, they were like, wow, there's like way too much sex and violence in it. Like cut it all out. Um, and you watch it. And I did not know that while uh, while watching. It's a movie I, I saw in the, in the early 2000s, maybe like the year it was released on DVD. Um, kind of didn't think much of at the time, to be honest. But I was like, you know what? 21 years has passed. Let's, let's check out Cherry Falls again. Um, I liked it a lot more this time. But boy, do you you miss some of the stuff in here. Like it, it really does feel like you're watching almost a TV uh, cut of this movie. Very sadly, Scream Factory did a great job on this release. There's a, a, a ton of uh, commentary and a ton of discussion with the director, Jeffrey Wright. He's an Australian director who did Romper Stomper. He, he kind of explains the, the problems the film had and what was cut out and what you're missing when you're watching it. Uh, but still very, very enjoyable. Um, still, still creepy in moments, good performances, some real standout, uh, sequences, but then there, the, like I said, there's that asterisk of like, this is, this, you really, really wish there was some way to see what they cut out of this, what, what the original version of this was like. The final two movies on this list are coming from our, our favorite distributor, one of our favorite distributors here on the channel, uh, Vinegar Syndrome. So this, this first one is Rush Week. Rush Week is like 50% parody, 50% um, just leaning into slasher tropes. But this is a, uh, a very, um, very whodunity, but also very uh, puerile um, piece of cinema. This is, this is set on a college campus. This is very um, frat humor oriented. 
um, but it's just it's got a really good feel to it. I felt uh, I really it, it, it's it's hard to it's hard to even explain why um, a a movie where uh, a masked killer is using uh, the the kind of frat symbol of this of this axe head he is using it to uh, kill people and we don't know why there's there seems to be some kind of loose motivation and it has to do with uh, the history of the frat and it has to do with pranks gone wrong and it has to do with um, them bumping up against the administration of this uh, of this college um, but it all comes together in a really satisfying way and I think there's just so much uh, 80s slasher flavor and campus flavor and like kind of college movie flavor in this uh, in this slasher. I, I really, really enjoyed it. I, I, I hadn't seen it before this release. Um, so very good. Uh, a lot of focus on the mystery element, a lot of focus on kind of almost like Nancy Drew-esque where the final girl is like trying to piece together the mystery, um, which becomes fairly clear and fairly obvious who's doing the killing. But it does, it's, it's, it's well put together and it's well thought out. The last movie on this list, and probably the best movie on this list, is Fade to Black. It's also the least slashery movie on this list. It, I, I see this pop up all the time. People call this a slasher, and I and I, it forces me to reckon with, oh yeah, like a character is killing several people um, for whatever reason, um, and they're in these kind of elaborate kill sequences. So I guess it is a slasher, but to me, it's we're following Eric Binford. Uh, played by Dennis Christopher, a real like Brava performance. Uh, this this guy who works at a at a, um, a film company, uh, like Film Reels, delivering Film Reels, delivering uh, film distribution company, and he is obsessed with movies. And he lives with his aunt or mother. It's unclear their relationship. Uh, he lives with her, and she's really overbearing. Um, and he's trying to he's 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 seeing girls, and he's falling in love with them, and he gets made fun of by the other guys at at work one of whom is Mickey Rourke. He's, he's just like the real kind of downtrodden, uh, almost like, this is almost like a Willard type story. Like this is Willard without the animals. We see Eric kind of snap and lose uh, his grip on reality. And finally something happens and he, he starts his kind of killing spree where uh, instead of like a Jason or a Michael where he has one disguise, he puts on one mask, uh, Eric uh, makes himself up like different movie characters, like different movie monsters, and kind of themes his murders uh, around those characters. It's, it's a, uh, it, yes, it is a slasher. I've, I've, I've kind of convinced myself of that, even though it does, it does feel like, like one of those Descent to Madness movies too. It is a slasher and the, um, but it's, it's really just a, a, a good film all around. Real interesting take on kind of cinephilia, because especially nowadays, I feel like when we have like movie geek characters or we when we talk about like you know it's you're so used to seeing these characters as like the protagonists like you're so used to seeing them as like uh oh like his his love of art and his love of movies like raises him up um but it really is that this this is an interesting exploration of like um just because uh, you're a nerd like me doesn't mean that you're entirely virtuous and entirely justified and entirely right, even though it is somewhat tragedy, uh, a tragic, somewhat sympathetic portrait of Eric. Um, you still kind of are like, well, he's in the wrong here. Shot all around Hollywood, shot all on location. Uh, really a uh, great snapshot of the era and a uh, fantastic movie. Uh, Vinegar Syndrome, this is one of their like more stacked releases. They really went all out because this is a bigger catalog title. I remember um, this was one of the big big first Anko Bay titles and it has been kind of missing from Blu-ray for a really long time and they just did it and they, they they pulled out all the stops for this. This week's book recommendation is not a slasher. I figured we'd give you a rest from the slashers. Uh, this is Consumed by David Cronenberg. Yes, that David Cronenberg, the filmmaker David Cronenberg, uh, The Brood, Shivers, uh, Scanners, The Fly, uh, that David Cronenberg, he wrote a novel a few years ago now called Consumed. Uh, I remember when it came out, and I remember kind of um, even people I trusted, even even friends of, of mine, their their kind of takes on it were lackluster. And I I, I waited, I waited some distance. Uh, I just recently read this. I actually listened to the audiobook, which is which is um, narrated by William Hurt, who's worked with Cronenberg quite a bit. Uh, I loved it. I thought it was great. It's a it's a book that starts uh, with a murder. It starts with a um, a death, and then we're following two uh, separate journalists in like this dual narrative um one of whom focuses on um medical journalism and one of them focuses on crime journalism and they're on this case 
that's going to kind of twist and turn and involve all these different people. Um, and they're both looking at it from their kind of, from a technophile, uh, consumerist way. And it's very, very, very Cronenbergian. There's a ton of body horror and a ton of weird perversity stuff and a ton of international intrigue and a ton of French and French Canadian. It is, uh, it's, it's really, really good. And I, 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 I really enjoy it. It's, it's not so much horror. It's not so much a horror novel. Um, but if you're a horror fan, especially if you're at all a Cronenberg fan, uh, you should definitely read uh, Consumed. Uh, it's, it, it sits alongside his films quite well. And what I find interesting is that with, with a history of violence, with Eastern promises, with a dangerous method, with Masters of the Stars, like, you see this, this outcrying of, of, of horror fans who are like, oh, I loved his earlier stuff. Why doesn't he do stuff like his earlier stuff? When he, like, released a novel that is very much like his earlier stuff. So if you want, um, if you want Cronenberg to kind of go back to being the old-style Cronenberg, uh, Consumed is what you should pick up. You should read it. It's um, very Cronenbergian. All right, I'm Adam Caesar. The book is Clown in the Cornfield and Video Night and Summer Job and Exponential and First One You Expect and Tribesman and all those books. Please go check them out. Please uh, go listen to the audiobooks. Please leave a review when you're done. Please tell a friend. Uh, it's what helps me keep this channel going. Thank you so much, and I will see you next week.